Hey there, Combo Cabal, Brent Cook, and today we are playing Jeskai Ascendancy in Modern, a card that I specced on when it was rotating out of standard. I have a box with roughly 70 Jeskai Ascendancies in them, just waiting for them to be worth money. I hope that this deck is good. Maybe this will be the deck to put Jeskai Ascendancy on the map. I certainly hope so. Well, if you're unfamiliar with the card, Jeskai Ascendancy says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn and tap those creatures an interesting effect right like it's pretty good but where is this going and then it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell you may draw a card if you do discard a card well why is that good so what we want to do is we want a birds of paradise in play to tap for a man of any color or a sylvan carotid for the most part uh and then these will be our mana generators. So every time we cast a one mana spell like Serum Visions or Consider, they untap. So that way the mana replaces itself. If it's Birds of Paradise, it's actually a potential win condition if you get up to 20 spells in one turn. And you basically just can't trip through your deck until you get a really big bird or a really large Fate Stitcher. And Fate Stitcher is really interesting because while it doesn't tap for mana, it untaps lands which is very, very good. But you can also tap down potential blockers, which is really interesting if you have enough additional free mana. One way that you can get up to 20 spells is having Underworld Breach, which will allow you to continually escape cards to keep recasting them. And it works very, very well with Consider because Consider allows you to essentially um, create more cards to escape even though it doesn't replace itself. So that's the like sort of way that this deck works. And if your opponent has something like an Insteering Bridge or a reason that you can't attack, there's this Retraction Helix here. And if you have three Birds of Paradise or Fate Stitcher type effects, you can just keep on recasting Ren and Six over and over and over again to infinitely ping your opponent out with a ton of clicks. I'm really, really hoping that's not what I have to do today because that sounds fairly miserable. But that is one way that this deck can win the game. This is a donation deck. Uh, so I don't, I should have looked it up previously. Maybe I'll go back and edit it later. But I uh, I don't remember the person that donated this. I've never played this deck before in my life. So I'm probably going to misplay a little bit today. And if I do, I apologize in advance. Uh, I just don't have a whole lot of experience playing this archetype in modern. I've literally never done, never done it before. But an interesting aspect of this deck is that we're playing Glittering Wish, which allows you to grab a multicolored card from your sideboard. So Jeskai Ascendancy, Lavinia, Aruth, which is a new card that says whenever you would draw a card, you can exile the top two cards of your deck instead and you can play those cards. Well, so that means that it's all just gravy with Jeskai Ascendancy. There's no need to discard because you don't have a hand. They're just every card you draw is being exiled to Aruth. So it's all just benefits. Uh Maybe we'll get the sweet combo today. I don't know. And Giganta's like pretty free in this deck because we don't play anything that's double colored. And if you're lucky enough, and I mean, this is really the dream, that you get Gigantha untapped in play with Jeskai Ascendancy to just keep on adding mana over and over and over again. Uh, it seems a little bit like Christmas land. Well, it is the holiday season, but I don't know how often that actually happens in this deck. This is sort of how the deck works and operates. If you have any questions, leave those down below. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this donation deck. And uh, yeah, and if you're looking to submit your own donation deck or support us, check out this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for some Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos 
videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to round number one, and before we begin, I'm going to now thank Brad, and I'm going to butcher this, Minielli for the donation deck. Brad, I'm sorry for not looking it up before I started recording. That is my fault. But thanks again for this sweet, sweet donation deck. Now, I, Brad, I hope you're ready to watch me kick some butt with your deck. We're going to start off by revealing our copy of Gigantha here. Um, and we have Glittering Wish that can go get a Jeskai Ascendancy. We have a Carotid. This seems like a keep to me. Okay, what is our opponent playing? So it's worth noting, I do think this deck might be a little bit weak to hammer time. So I'm sort of hoping to not face hammer this league, which is sort of a tough ask against probably the best deck in the format. All right, Stomping Ground, Ragavan. So likely some sort of Blood Moon deck. Another copy of Glittering Wish. We'll shock here. Tap for a green and play Abundant Growth. Okay, gemstone mine. So next turn we can go Grove Glittering Wish. But that doesn't actually help us out, so I think I'm going to play the Keratid instead. Okay, so our opponent has three mana. What are they going to do here? This looks like Ponza. Getting a forest. Ren and six. I don't care about Ren, so that worked out. Okay. So we might actually have a turn four with this hand. I could be wrong. Ooh, Morphos was a good one. Or, or I'm sorry, I need to tap this for green. Green, white. Oh, no, I don't. I'm playing the uh, undo. Colorless, green. I forgot that I'm actually just casting character this turn and not playing uh, the Glittering Wish. So next turn we play Glittering Wish. And then the turn after that, we play Ascendancy and try to win the game. So I think the plan right now is to um, silence our opponent in their next upkeep to essentially time lock them, and then win on our following turn. Sylvan Character got a big old booty. Zero three. What do they have here? A Charco's Command? What? <laughs> all right I, I guess i get punished um wow not what i was expecting out of the potential ponza deck but i did get punished weird i i still think it's correct to block there in most situations uh, i guess i just get wrecked for uh making the correct play do we have a creature we don't so white green play the glittering wish we'll go get ascendancy now yes so just guy ascendancy is in her hand and i'm getting mega punished for that block okay weird i think i'm going to end step or upkeep silence them so that way i can play ascendancy on the following turn i think what how we're going to need to win this game is we're going to have to find fate stitcher all right let's cast the silence silence is on the stack and it resolves okay the ragavan getting in there they hit an ascendancy that's fine i didn't want that anyway 
Okay, so now I'm at 10 life with the red and six activation. Draw. Another gemstone. Uh, so red, blue, and then white. Play Ascendancy. Hope it resolves. And I say that because they ended up getting this capture triumph, which makes me feel a little bit nervous. And I think I'm going to have to Cer Cerulean Wisp the Ragavan. Because I just need to find a Fate Stitcher. Interesting that they're shocked right there. They have six mana. This is a very strange deck. Like, why do you need Ren and Six in your Atarkus Command Lightning Helix deck? That also has Ketria Triome. Like, I thought our opponent was on Ponza. If I had known they were just on, like, a random four-color burn deck, I would not have locked with the Keratid. Because I thought not giving them the treasures meant a lot more. Okay... So we're going to fall to five here. We're probably just dead uh, because the run in six is four and then we're dead to Boros Charm. I'm at four. And there's Boros Charm. Okay, so we lost game number one, not the end of the world. All right, so we probably want this path in the endings. Let's get rid of the silence. Okay, so that brings us up to 61. Hmm. Maybe take out the explosives? Like, explosives is a free spell for the Ascendancy, so I'm a little hesitant to do that. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like this is a path matchup. Maybe I just leave a prismatic ending? I'm not sure. All right, let's just submit this and see how... Like, I don't have a cyborg guide, so I don't really know what I'm doing here. Just, it seems like the mapping is a little off, but I might not be understanding something. All right, so we're starting off by revealing our Gigantha again. And this seems fine. We'll keep this. So we have Fate Stitcher and the Ascendancy. Uh, that doesn't matter. We can win with Wear Tear. Or just by attacking. All right, so let's just grab the forest and play the abundant growth. We'd like to find a land, and we did. So that was huge. Um, now we're really just looking for one more land to play this Just Guy Ascendancy. All right, no Ragavan this time. Draw. At the exile. I'm just going to consider here looking for that land. Because if I had like a Serum Visions or something, I want to uh, be able to cast it. And we found the land. So that was beautiful. Okay, so now they have land number two this turn. And one thing we do have to worry a little bit about, or they didn't have it here, was the potential Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Draw. So we should be able to just win next turn. Um, a breeding pool, I guess. That doesn't work. I need to uh, land the Tefts for red or white. The so Hallowed Fountain? Yeah, Hallowed Fountain does it. All right, so white, red, blue, just guy ascendancy. And then next turn, we can cast a spell, discard Fate Stitcher, unearth Fate Stitcher, and then try to win the game. Okay. Force of Vigor, that hurt. Yep. That is certainly a modern card that you can play that wrecks Jeskai Ascendancy. We do have this Glittering Wish here to buy time, or not buy time, but to find another copy. Okay. Sure. Okay, so I think I'm just going to play the Carotid here, and then Visions. Bottom, bottom. 
Okay, so next turn I'm going to play Glittering Wish and Birds, trying to get another Ascendancy, then win the turn after. Maybe I should have pathed the last turn instead of playing the Visions. I didn't even consider that. They have three cards. Yeah, maybe I should have just pathed last turn. Not going to block. I learned my lesson. And they're passing. Okay, so let's play the Glittering Wish. Yes. Get Just Guy Ascendancy. Play Birds. And pass the turn. If need be, I can untap the Sylvan Carotid with this uh, Cerulean Wisps and then cast Path. Okay, I'm going to respond to that. Um, let's untap this and then Path this idiot. Why can't I target that? Oh, Pro Monocolor. It turns out I couldn't Path it. Um, hmm. I could path my own bird. I don't feel like that's a good choice, though. So I'm going to go to 10, and they'll have a 4-4. Four, four. I guess I can path the 4-4. Four, four. Okay, what else do you have? Nothing? Good deal. So I I should probably path here because if I take seven, I'm just dead to double burn spell. If they have another force of vigor, I'm in a lot of trouble. All right, three cards in hand, dash their monkey. So I'll take five here going to eight and they'll have three available mana with two cards in hand. If their last two, ooh, glittering wish. I don't know if they have anything good in their sideboard to get with it. I wonder if you're just like priced into keeping in silence against a bunch of decks now because of Force of Vigor. Like, am I supposed to be boarding in silence now to stop Force? I don't know. They s decided to cast the Glittering Wish, which does net them a 4 4 Golem uh, due to the general. And they just have to get a green card to turn on their uh, Force of Vigor if they have one. I don't have a choice, so I just have to play into Force of Vigor. Boros Charm. Um, actually, I might be dead here. I just realized I can't cast Just Guy's Sentency uh, and win the game unless I draw something that isn't Forest. I just lost. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that the forest uh, was going to bite me here in the butt. Damn. Uh, that's unfortunate. What's visions then? I eat. So that can go in the bottom. Oh no, I thought they were both the uh, pain land. That doesn't do me any good either. That has to go on the bottom too. Sorry, I'm just like painfully messing this up. Um, I think I just have to pass here. All right, so they have Ragavan and Borostrom. I might just be dead here anyway. Are you gonna charm me now? Oh, because they get another golem this way. Yeah, I'm just dead. Okay, well, this one might have been a little bit of my own fault uh, for not realizing that Forest interacts just like super uh, unfavorably in this deck and I fetched it. So I don't have any excuses other than I'm learning. So bear with me. Uh, but this match was probably on me. Round number two will be coming up in just a moment. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. 
In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Welcome to match number two. Okay, revealing our Gigantha. We are on the play. So this doesn't have access to Ascendancy, but we do have Carroted and Birds. I don't know. I don't know enough about this deck. I'm going to try this out. Oh, we're on the draw. I thought we were on the play. My bad. I think it's slightly better on the draw. Turn one channeler. Okay. So I wonder if we're supposed to play out the birds or just play the abundant growth then. Because the birds probably isn't going to live against blue red. Hmm. Okay. Draw. That was a good one. Let's play the bird. Let's go for the high risk play. I guess the upside is if for some reason if we drew ascendancy, we could theoretically have a turn two, which would be pretty sweet. Okay. They've used their bobble. They're activating flooded strand. What are you doing now? Two mana for a dashed monkey. No fear. And I'm not going to block. Wisps. Sure. And they're casting it. What what's going to become a blue creature here? Their channeler? Rightfully so. Draw. Silence. Okay. I'm gonna cast Serum Visions here looking for ascendancy. Did not find it. Um bottom. Let's put the land on top so that for like I wouldn't mind drawing it, but just in case Ragavan gets in, we can also uh, exile that instead. Alright, so we're at the point of the game where we really, really need to find... Um, what is it called? Just Guy Ascendancy. Okay, I'm not going to block that. I'll go to 12. I have five cards in hand. Another Channeler. Come on, cast Ragavan. They did not cast Ragavan. Um... I think I'm going to play Explosives for one. Pass the turn. Okay, so we also get to make sure that they don't get to dash a Ragavan this turn by waiting till the combat step. We have this Carriage back anyway, so it's probably not going to be a big deal. But this does stop dash Ragavan. They have four cards in hand. We killed two of their creatures here let's just see if we can get lucky enough to find the just guy ascendancy and there's the merc tide the five five draw um let's play abundant growth draw there's ascendancy i can't cast it with backup i think i'm going to wait a turn Drawing a card with Fiery Islet, that's fine. I'm dead to double Lightning Bolt, so I don't really have an incentive to silence them anyway. Four cards in hand. So we're going to go to six life here. Yep. If you have two bolts, you have two bolts. And they're passing. Draw. Another Ascendancy, that's a little bit awkward. Let's cast Silence. If they counterspell this, I just have to uh, cast the Ascendancy. I can't afford to Silence again. The Silence Resolve. Okay, five cards. It is Resolve. So we're going to tap this for red. Blue, white. Ascendancy. So now we tap this for white, cast silence, and then we auto yield to these. Yes, discard 
I think we just lost because I didn't have another uh, one mana spell. If I drew a one mana spell here, I think we would have actually been in decent shape. Um, damn. That resolves. I can bring back the Fate Stitcher, but we don't. I can't cast either of these, so I'm just dead to Murktide. Well, I guess technically I'm not dead. I just have to like let them attack and bolt me next turn. Yeah. So they haven't found a lightning bolt yet. I'm dead to bolt. Um, island, sure. I'm also dead to another Murktide region, making this Murktide larger. There it is. Okay, so now I'm dead. Yep. That was brutal. We almost got to do our thing. Deck came up just a little bit short. Um, this feels like a matchup where we want Veil of Summer more than Silence. I mean, they're both probably fine. Maybe take out Prism. Um, don't know about that. Cyborging with this deck is very difficult. Maybe take out Abundant Harvest. You just like take out the birds because like they're never going to live. Maybe that's the place you just like skim on birds. Let's try this. I might just be wrong in that you have to have Birds of Paradise anyway. But I'm learning, so bear with me. Alright, revealing Gigantha. Sure, we'll keep it. Okay. Botanical Sanctum into Serum Visions. Looking for Sylvan Keratid, but also our just guy ascendancy and that is a good start so we'll bottom the land and keep the glittering wish okay i guess the one nice uh part about this matchup is that our opponent cannot have force of vigor all right so we're gonna go to 18 here tap this for a green and this for a white to play glittering wish to go get just guy ascendancy pass the turn Okay, we'll take one going to 17, draw. Um, let's just play the Abundant Harvest here. We don't need to jam Ascendancy into their open mana. Let's choose land. Then on this one, we'll say non-land. Wheat. All right. Am I going to get Blood Mooned? Nope. Good deal. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to draw. All right. So blue, white, red. Wait, Ascendancy. They're going to attempt to counterspell the Nimble Veil of Summer. Ooh, it just resolved. That's the turn. If they have Brazen Borrower, we can also Veil of Summer that. Okay, so I'm going to go to 13 here. And they're going for uh, a very quick win. We're at 10. Ah, uh, and there's the effing Blood Moon. I guess we have double Mana so it's not the end of the world. And Blood Moon will allow me to kill this Dragon Rage Channeler, which is kind of nice. Thank you for that. Okay, let's set up our auto yields. Yes. Discard this prismatic ending. We don't need that. Now I'm looking to find a fate stitcher. Okay. Cast these. Yes. Discard Veil of Summer. And let's add blue blue. Consider. Yes, discard the Ascendancy. Let's look. 
I don't think that actually helps us. Let's put that to the graveyard. Let's visions, I guess. I can metamorphose into it after. Put as a charm to the graveyard, scry. These don't help me. I'm gonna bottom those. Play the land. Let's metamorphose again. What I do for a uh, a fate stitcher. There we go. And let's add blue red. Bring back fate stitcher. Always yield. Save targets. Yes. Okay. So now it's just roughly a million clicks from for from here in order to win this game. Okay, so now I will tap this for mana. Cast consider. Maybe I did that wrong. Maybe I was supposed to add some white mana so I could cast these silences. I didn't even consider that. No joke intended there. Uh back to the graveyard it looks like we fizzled that's a bummer move to combat and attack for three i guess then fate stitcher is going to get exiled if i can make white mana i could prismatic ending the blood moon that's probably an oversight on my part just more inexperience Jeez Louise, Veil of Summer at 10. And we've already used three copies of Manamorphos. Not looking good. I'm going to cast this. Yes, draw. That's a bummer. This Veil Resolve. Unfortunately, I, I could play this for two, but it doesn't hit the Blood Moon. And if I wait till next turn to cast it and activate, I'm going to be tapped out and I just lose. So I think I'm supposed to cast it for zero. I just hope to get lucky with my draws. Draw the, the fourth copy of Manamorphose. Yes. Carotid, another card I can't cast. Uh, we just have to pass the turn here. And we're probably just dead. Draw. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything here. Sort of a bummer. Uh, this game might have been my own fault. I'm not sure. But uh, unfortunately, we're 0 and 2. We haven't really got to do the thing yet stinks i can't but feel that maybe this deck wants some number of force of vigor but i'm also not super experienced with it so i could just entirely be wrong it just seems like if we're a deck playing a bunch of green spells we probably want to be able to play one of the best green spells that's available to us but i just could be entirely wrong uh, i'm not an expert so i'm just going to keep on figuring out things as i go bear with me i'm sure it's frustrating to watch me misplay i get it uh, still three more rounds left to go. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot, everyone's favorite storm wind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, 4 treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the Power Toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. 
make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels versus Goblins, Chatterstorm versus Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. We're back at it again. Match number three. We've already revealed our Gigantha. We're on the draw. I'm going to try this out. I understand that we don't have an Ascendancy or a way of getting Ascendancy. I don't know if you're supposed to mulligan for those hands or not, but I think just like having a creature and a removal spell is fairly good on its own. Okay, so we're just going to lead off on the Birds of Paradise here. Grab our forest. Boom. Maybe getting forest this time won't punish me. Who knows? Sheltered Thicket. That's interesting. Okay, what are you playing? Okay, zero clue. Uh, is this just like Red Green Titan? Draw. Maybe it's wrong to get Forest in the dark because if I draw Ascendancy, I can't cast it on turn two. Just a thought. It might be. Like, I just don't have... Like, I've never played this deck before, so I'm not sure. All right, so looking kind of scary. This looks like Scape Shift Titan. Another Farseek. Yeah. And another one. So that means that next turn, if they go land Scape Shift, I'm dead. Okay. Silence. Let's Manamorphose here try to dig. Green, white. Waterlog Grove. Let's sacrifice in a draw card. Harvest will say non land. Consider. Okay. Um, let's cast the visions. Still no uh, ascendancy yet. We'll bottom these. I don't think I played a land, have I? This is turn three. Oh, I played the water all grove. My bad. I did play the land. Okay. So if they have landscape shift, I'm just dead. Seven lands, I remember being the lucky number. I guess seven lands is 18 damage. And I'm at 19. So Titan gets Valcut and then another mountain. And that will deal six damage, so they'll kill the bird, and then, you know, three more after that. So once again, I think the forest here is actually going to bite me in the butt. Then again, I might have been dead this turn had I been at 17. Okay. So, like, I thought they're going to kill bird and then deal me three. Yep. Draw. Wisps. Let's draw a card off visions. Breach, not good enough here. Okay, let's play Keratid. And I think I'm just gonna silence here. So if they attack and get two mountains, that will be 12 damage, trample over for three. Oh, they have a land drop. Okay, I'm just dead. Okay, so they got me there. That's a bummer. So, Prismatic Ending doesn't seem great. I don't think Explosive seems that good here. I'm going to keep Silence for dealing with Force of Vigor. Probably don't want the Bolt. Hmm. This seems like a deck where Teferi might have actually been pretty good in. Maybe it's too slow for the main deck, but I'd like to see maybe more copies in the board to bring in to just stop Force of Vigor effects. That seems like it'd be really strong. Because, like, it's not like you always have enough mana to go Silence Ascendancy win the game in post-board games, so maybe more copies of Teferi would be nice. Let's bring that in. Um... 
Lavinia seems like not ideal. Like it does stop Force of Vigor from being alt casted, but it's like pretty fragile against the Valakut deck, I think. Maybe we keep one copy vending. All right, on the play. Reveal our Gigantha again. Sure. Like we can cast Glittering Wish. I don't know if that's good enough, but we have that option. All right, Sanctum Pass. Turn one Summoner's Pact? What? So we won a game. That happened. <laughs> I don't know. That must have been a misclick. Okay. Uh, this seems fine. We'll try this out. Keep. All right. No summoners packed action this time. Draw. Another copy of Glittering Wish. We'll just lead off on Hanson here. Oombop. Birds of Paradise. And they're going to activate their wooded foothills, probably getting a tap land. Ooh, they're bolting. So that means that they have a bolt in hand to kill our bird. And they did. Okay, not the end of the world. We do have this Fate Stitcher. So I think next turn we're probably going to play Glittering Wish for Ascendancy. Misty. Let's uh, go get a Tumble Garden. So we're dealing ourselves a bunch of damage this game, which I'm a little bit worried about because it's going to make killing us with Valakut a lot easier for them. Okay. Yeah, Ascendancy seems like it would be a very good Teferi deck. Like, it just seems like there should be Teferis in the main deck. Like, I don't know what Run and Six is actually doing other than that cute infinite damage play that you could probably just do off a of Glittering Wish if you needed to. So, like, I don't know if I love the run. Like, there should just be, like, two or three Teferi in the main deck to stop Glittering Wish, to stop removal on your creatures. Makes a lot of sense. You could just, like, jam it turn two off of birds a lot of the time, too. All right, they're just going to pass. So they have five cards. Wisps. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to play directly into their Force of Vigor. This guy Ascendancy. And they're fetching again. They resolved. Okay, that's good. Whoops, I accidentally hit my mic there. Sorry about that. Will this be the game that we get to do our thing? Will it be? They're paying costs. Search for tomorrow. Okay. You've gotten a mountain. Now what? Second mountain draw. I don't like this pause. Okay. So let's start off by taking one. Let's cast consider. Then set up our auto yields. Okay, yes. Discard the Fate Stitcher. Consider. I do not need another Glittering Wish. I don't really need another Ascendancy either, though. Let's bring back Fate Stitcher. And... Let's attempt to untap the Watery Grove, or Waterlogged Grove. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is cast the Wisps. Yes. Oh, they just conceded. We didn't really get to do our thing again, but we got our first match win. I'll take it. We're one and two with two rounds left to go. Maybe one day we'll actually get to do the thing. I hope so. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, 
TCG player or Amazon and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Match number four, we're back. We have our Gigantha over here just hanging out. We've opened up a hand that, unfortunately, I don't think we're allowed to keep. We're going to mulligan that. And this seems fine. Let's get rid of this forest since it's bit me in the butt a few times already. And our opponent's taking in a mulligan to four. And now to three. Okay. They're on Tron. Well, if there's a deck that can win on turn three, it's definitely Tron. On a mulligan to three, that is, not turn three. All right, we have Hansen in play. They can activate their map now. You got it. Power plant. All right, I'm just going to play the Kirichid and then Abundant Harvest. Non land. Visions. Okay. So they're going to have Power Plant this turn. Two cards. I'm not going to play out that Keratid. Try, we don't need this stuff. Bottom those. Let's cast Consider. That's a good one. Yes. No, I, I want to draw it. Okay, there we go. Uh, White, green... Cast the Wish. Go get Jeskai Ascendancy. Play Hoddled Fountain Tapped. And now we have a win as long as our opponent doesn't have, like, Ugin right here. Three cards in hand. Not Urza's Tower. Okay, so white, blue, red, Ascendancy. Green, white. We'll cast Manamorphose. All right, I think we should probably actually get to do the thing this game. Yes, discard Keratid. Um, sure, let's do blue, blue. All right, we'll do blue, blue. Yes, consider. Yes, discard the Fate Stitcher. I can go to the graveyard. Silence. So let's bring back the Fate Stitcher. Yes. Okay, and our opponent conceded. Woot woot. Love it. We actually got to do the thing a little bit. Like, we didn't get to attack for lethal, but we had the win. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I don't think we're going to need Silence here. They could be a Force of Vigor deck, but I don't think Tron is. Uh, I could be wrong. Which, you know, I wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong in my life. Uh, let's try this. Game number two. So we're, we can win games when our opponents throw games via Summoner's Pact or Mulliganing to three. Let's see if uh, we can squeeze out another win against Tron here. I'd like that. Reveal our Gigantha. Hmm. I think this hand's probably fine. I like that we have the explosives. Because in theory it allows us to maybe um like go for it after tapping out for the carotid. So it would allow us to theoretically try to be a turn quicker. Let's mill the bird. Another carotid. We need to find ascendancy. And that means Tron. Draw. Renin six. Okay, so we're gonna play a Keratid here. And they're going to have Tron. Yep. Okay. So the nice thing about Keratid is it does not die against Karn. Another map. Sure. Ratchet Bomb, that's annoying. Draw. 
Okay, so I'm gonna metamorphose here. We need to find ascendancy. That's the big thing. Blue, green. Let's morphose again. Blue, white. Okay, I'm trying not to tap this gemstone mine. Let's visions. Glittering wish. Hmm. Is that fast enough? It's gotta be. Uh, and then I could tap the, I should probably just remove the end or ending the ratchet bomb. I was trying to think if I tap the carotid or tap the gemstone mine to play carotid, does that benefit me? Because I'd lose this and then next turn I could glittering wish off these two. Hold on. Uh, this might just be good enough here because I have the land. Glittering wish into ascendancy play e untap. Okay. Maybe this is good, better. Yeah, I think this might just be a better play. B for zero coming up. So now they had a counter for the ratchet bomb. And now they have a million mana. And they're going to exile my lands. Yep. Draw. So I have to remove the ratchet bomb here. And then I think we could maybe still win this game if I draw into exactly Ascendancy after I take the 10 from Ulamog. Another map. You got it. Okay. So they're going to exile the top 10 cards or 20 cards of our deck with Ulamog. My bad. And O Stone. All right. I am not beating O Stone. I'm just going to go to the next game. All right. So, I guess Bolt can come out of our deck. That card does literally nothing. Silence is probably better than that. Because, like, on those crucial turns, you can use Silence as a Time Lock. I wonder if Time Lock is just better than Prismatic Ending. It probably is. Let's try out Time Lock. All right, we're on the play against Tron. Revealing our Gigantha once again, and we cannot keep this, unfortunately, ship. This is fine. Um, I think we just bought him a land. Keep. Let's bottom the fountain. So that way I, I can use Grove to draw a card if I need to later, if we just need to dig. Whoops. Botanical Sanctum into Birds of Paradise. There's this Power Plant into Expedition Map. All right. Um, I think I'm going to hold back the Carotid here. Whoops. Uh, let's play the Abundant Harvest because that allows me to triple spell this turn if I don't. Do that so i'll take one i'll cast the visions looking for ascendancy kind of glittering wish that should be good enough bottom this play another bird okay and i might have just messed up i bottom it a land and a land would actually give me wish into ascendancy so that was probably a mistake so i have it um so that was like a fortunate draw, but I wonder if we're actually supposed to play the Ascendancy this turn. I don't think we are. So I think we're supposed to just, because then that way it could get um, exiled by Karn. So instead I think we're supposed to play the Carotid. Or maybe I hang on to the Carotid to discard. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. Okay. So they're going to activate map. And let's see what their play is this turn. They have Tron. What now? 
Seven mana? Sure. So they'll probably exile a bird. Bird from hand. Okay, we'll exile the Keratid. That's fine. That actually worked out really well for us. Okay, let's draw a card. Perfect. Draw. All right, blue, red, white, Ascendancy. I don't know if it matters which one I cast here. Okay, so we are going to attempt to kill our, bir our opponent with a pair of birds here. And we'll discard the Consider. Maybe I should have cast the... Um, to consider instead of the abundant growth. All right, blue, green. Let's cast the Manamorphos. Three spells are very good when you have Ascendancy. Or the Keratid. We'll add blue, blue. Blue, blue. Let's cast the Visions. Yes. Discard the land. Scry. Um, I think we want the other Ascendancy. Top, top? Red, white. Let's cast the Wisps. Yes, discard. Mm. The sounds, I guess? And now let's add another blue here. Okay, so now I can tap this for green, white. Play Ascendancy. Yes. Discard the land. And this should be pretty easy from here. Blue, red. Let's cast the Glittering Wish. Our opponent's going to die to a pair of birds. We actually did the thing. That's a second match win. That was really sweet. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That's what you get for not exiling my bird. Beat down birds. Beat down birds. And it's blue. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the fifth and final match will be coming up in just a second. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth and final round. We've opened up a no-lander. We're going to have to ship that back for a new hand. This seems Fine, we'll keep this bottom the wisps and uh, see what we can make happen here. Bell get recovery. I'll be honest, I don't really know what that means. Maybe I should. We'll get the breeding pool and then play our trusty bird of paradise. BOP bop. Are they just like all? Oh, it's Belcher. Why didn't I see that before? It's just Belcher. I was like, Oops, all spells isn't viable, right? What was I thinking? What's Visions? Uh, both of these are really good. Yes, and then what's Visions again? Bottom, top. Okay. So it sounds pretty good against Belcher. Am I dead? All right, you can recross the paths, that's fine. So we get to play Ascendancy while holding up Silence next turn, which is pretty huge. Or I could just try to win the game, I suppose. Um, that is also an option. So I can use these three in order to cast... Um, I'm keeping the Ascendancy on top. <laughs> uh, in order to cast Ascendancy, and then I can cast Abundant Harvest to... I mean, there's probably another way of doing it, too. I could probably use this for the white. So white. 
blue, red. Play the Ascendancy. Let's cast Consider. Then we'll set up our auto yields. Yes. Discard Bolt. Cast Consider. No, we'll keep that. Consider again. Yes. Discard that. Consider. The run to the graveyard. Fate Stitcher. That was actually a really good one. Okay, so now we will Abundant Harvest. We might just have it here. Uh, discard the Fate Stitcher. Okay, non-land. Alright, well that was kind of stinky. We will put the Fate Stitcher into play. Untap the Hollowed Fountain. Yes. And now we will cast Silence. And now we can cast two mana spells. Okay. So, untap the Fountain. Yes. White, green. Manamorphos. Turns out that Ascendancy is just the faster deck, apparently. Okay, we'll do green, white. And then blue. Uh, actually, undo that. Red. And then untap this blue so that it's going to allow me to get um what is it called expressive iteration off this yes discard the stomping ground yes go get iteration woot woot untap yes blue blue Okay. Discard the land and now we can play iteration. So goes to hand, we'll take abundant harvest. That on the bottom and glittering wish goes to exile. Okay. Uh let's untap our breeding pool. Yes. Green, green. We'll play metamorphose. This is fun. Uh, discard the Sizzle Charm. And we'll make green green here. Red, untap the fountain. And we'll do blue. Let's play Underworld Breach, I guess. Yes. Glittering Wish. And our opponent has conceded the game. Nice. Game number one over Belcher. The nice thing about silence is, and I know this from the 2010 era of the Epic Storm, it does not target our opponent, which means that our opponent, when they're siding in Leyline of Sanctity, silence does not care about it. So that's a pretty big upgrade there. Um, this Lavinia is pretty good. I don't know if that's a card we want to keep on our sideboard for Wish. It probably is, uh, but that's worth mentioning. Bolt's kind of bad, so we can get that out of our deck. This Explosives isn't very good, but I don't know if we're supposed to sideboard in something else instead. Um, Prismatic Ending doesn't seem very good. Like, it hits Treasures? That's about it. Um, so, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I'm also not crazy about Ren and Six here. Like, I think Ren should probably get out of her deck. Like, I'd rather have a prismatic ending than a dead card. Hmm. Let's just try this out. Game number two versus Belcher. Reveal our copy of Gigantha. This hand's not bad. We do have to find an Ascendancy, but it's fine. Keep. Okay. We're going to lead off on our trusty... Bird of Paradise again. Definitely the term one we want in this matchup, but we do have to find the Just Guy Ascendancy immediately. 
Okay. Ooh, they had the spike field hazard. Ding! Good draw, Bryant. You play in that very nicely. I think I might actually hold up Is It Charm next turn. Manamorphose? What do they need a green for? Are they going for it? Am I just dead? Green again? Belcher. So if I draw the um, Glittering Wish, I can destroy this. Wow! <laughs> Yes, yes. All right, so a little glittering wish. And let's grab that wear chair. Donk. Good deal. Still three cards in our opponent's hand. They set up where you recross the paths. I guess I also could have retraction helixed the belcher i didn't see that play initially but now looking at my hand that that could have been an out and i reveal just guy's sentency i will keep that on top all right so this is it charm is not going to be super good against um the reforge this hole because they played a fourth mana source so blue white red play sentency Okay, we might actually be able to win here. Cast the button harvest. We'll auto yield. Okay. Ooh, that hurt. Um. Damn. Yeah. Yes. Does me no good. Uh, discard the retraction helix non-land fate stitcher oh that's such a bummer we would have won this game all right i'm gonna wisps here see if i can cantrip okay so i pretty much have to draw silence off this uh reforge damn they just had it all right there they probably have a pact in their 7-2. I didn't draw the silence anyway. Yep. So well played by the opponent. They had it. Uh, even after we blew up their Belcher. Okay. Sure. And we're dead. Okay. So we did not get that one. So close. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to change anything. We just didn't happen to get it. Okay, game three, we're on the play against Belcher. We have the silence. We have a Jeska Ascendancy, but we're stuck on this off-color land with no creature. We just have to ship that back. And this seems fine. I think I bought him the stomping ground. A tough call. Maybe I bought him the Temple Garden and then hide the silence with the Morphos. Because this way I can cast the Is it Charm off these two lands. Alright, I'm gonna shock myself and play the Harvest. Non-land. Carotid, that's a good one. Okay. The second silence. So now I feel a little bit foolish for putting that white source on the bottom. But I guess they still have the Morphos. Ooh, they missed their land. All right, Bird Pass. Sure. Draw. Misty. I'm just going to pass here. Okay, I'm going to cycle the Manamorphos, I think. Okay. We'll do blue red. I don't know if I'm whoops. Um I'm gonna is a charm. 
I don't need this prismatic ending routing in my hand. Consider. Yes, they can go to the graveyard. Okay. Draw. Harvest. Non land. Consider. We'll keep that and pass the turn. So right now we don't have enough mana to win next turn in one swift motion, so we're just kind of playing defense. And I'm willing to bet that if our opponent kept a one land hand, that it was because they had Force of Vigor. So I think we're really going to have to proactively silence them if we're trying to win this game. Uh, yeah, that happens. Draw. So I can cast the Ascendancy, but uh, unfortunately that re requires tapping out. We don't have a red card. So I think what I'm supposed to do here is Wisp to Cantrip. Green, red. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going to attempt to silence them. Because if they go land Belcher, I'm just dead. Draw. And does that do it? I think it does. So silence. Uh, ascendancy. Hmm, it doesn't do it. Uh, so I think I'm supposed to play Ascendancy and then they're going to force a Vigor me. Yeah, I'm, I'm one mana short right now, I think. Blue, red, white. Actually, I might be able to do this. Oh no, I had enough already. I'm a dummy. I could have done this. I could have silenced first. So... I'm so stupid. Yeah, I made this more difficult on myself. Why Why can't I count? <laughs> like, it wouldn't have been that difficult. Uh, discard the Abundant Growth. Ooh, it just resolved. Okay. So this should be pretty easy then. Uh, undo. So... Green, white, blue, cast Glittering Wish, yes, yes, so I think this is a spot where we're actually supposed to get a Ruth. Okay, so then red, red, play the Ruth. white, or I'm sorry, blue, blue, green, Play the Manamorphose. So this is going to just be a draw four, essentially. Okay. Uh, green, white. Why did I only get one mana off that? Blue. Red. Sorry, I need to figure this out. What does this card do again? Destroy stuff? Yeah. Uh, so I could get to Fairy, but I don't think that's the correct play. I think we're supposed to just get the Expressive Iteration. All right, let's cast Glittering Wish. Okay. Yes. Get Expressive Iteration. This is pretty sweet. Okay. Uh, so we'll do blue, white, green. Expressive Iteration. Yes. Um, hey, hey, and our opponent conceded. We got the 3-2 after that not-so-great start. Kind of awesome. Uh, this deck was a lot of fun. Aruth seemed really cool there. Uh, I do think that it might be a little bit win more, but hey, uh, we got to do the thing, which is what we're trying to do here at this channel. We're just trying to test stuff out. So I think if I was going to give real suggestions... I'd like to see some Teferis in the main deck. I know they're three mana, but stopping Force of Vigor, Force of Negation, all that good stuff seems very, very important. So I'd like to see more copies of Teferi. I don't think the run was very good. I do re I do question Retraction Helix a little bit. I understand that it, you can deal infinite damage, but like, 
do you really need that if you're running this glittering wish package like i don't know maybe i'm wrong but it just seems kind of cute it seems like the core of the deck uh could have more cantrips and stuff in into it if you just cut some of this more cute stuff um and i don't know but like i sort of want a fourth fate stitcher so that way you don't have to have a creature in play to start every combo turn but once again i'm inexperienced take my suggestions with a grain of salt let me know what you thought maybe i'm entirely wrong and that's possible but thank you for watching keep storming have a great day long live just guy ascendancy hey brand cook here i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.